Day 288 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian war. Juzzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. And as always, I'll start off with those Russian military losses. So as of the 8th of December, 22, so in the last 24-hour reporting period, there's been an additional 340 Russian military personnel losses. So just tapping above that 93,000 mark today. Then when we take a look at the Russian hardware losses, so armored combat vehicles, an additional two losses there, tanks two, and artillery two losses again. Then we'll move back to the map and we'll start out again in the Belgorod region. So the neighboring Russian oblast, where the governor of this oblast announced that Russian air defenses shot down all Ukrainian fired missiles sent their way today. But the governor of the oblast also said there was some damage to the local power infrastructure as well. So Russia is trying to have its cake and eat it too. So basically trying to save face, but also blame Ukraine for damage to its power infrastructure. And this is quite a, a common uh, narrative for, for Russia. They always love to say something like, you can't hurt us, but at the same time they say, how dare you hurt us? Then we'll move across to the neighboring Ukrainian oblast of Kharkiv, where there was actually some uh, Russian shelling there today as well. Then we take a look at the Donbass, where generally uh, there were around 20 Russian soldiers mobilized through the Wagner prison program, who actually ended up deserting the, the Russian army near the front lines of the Donbass. So I just want to say something like, oh no, Russia just realized you can't trust a convict that's serving time coming straight from jail. But I'll also say that this type of story is not isolated. It doesn't always get reported because Russia certainly attempts to suppress these types of stories. But we have a lot of Russian soldier call intercepts now where they choose this desertion approach of doing it as a, a group of deserters. Which kind of seems to make sense now that I think about it, as you rally together behind an idea after being treated like garbage by your own military on the front lines. Then more specifically in the region, Russian forces continue to direct significant amounts of reinforcements around the Svartova area. And Russia is really looking to hold on to this area during the winter time. So to clarify, not to advance from this location really, but otherwise really just to hold it. Then a little bit further down, Russian forces are attempting to, well, do counterattacks near Chavono uh, Papivka. So right here, as the battles for the, the P66 highway really continue. It's quite contested right now, even though these maps don't show it. We'll zoom out and look a little bit more inland at uh, in the Donbass region. So there's been even more fire and explosions reported at Russian-occupied Shakhtarsk. Now I've got to zoom in to find this one here. So there it is. And this is the second time in as many days that this has occurred. And for this time, Ukrainian forces hit a, a Russian uh, warehouse in the area. Then we'll just quickly move back to the center of Donbass for a moment, where Bakhmut still holds, and Ukrainian forces continue to repel assaults in the zone. So this time it was early in the morning, this morning, that uh, Russian attacks occurred but failed. And really, Russia has tried every possible attack combination in this region. So from the north, in the morning, from the south, at night. Also, the, the very popular frontal assaults, which always have such devastating losses for the Russian forces. Everything except training their forces and providing them with sufficient and modern arms. Then we'll move across a little bit on the map here to, say, the Zaporizhia zone or area or oblast, where, you know, another day, another explosion in Russian-occupied Tokmak. We're not quite sure about this one yet, uh, can't yet confirm, but it's either a, a Russian base or an ammunitions depot. 
And I keep saying Russia should really try to learn from these attacks. But it is a supposedly strategic location for Russia, as you can see the main highway, which Russia or the Russian army loves to drive on only in many cases, but also the, the white line, which indicates the, the railway as well. Which again, the Russian army loves or the, the Russian war machine loves in order to uh, use for logistics and you know supply reasons. Uh, also somewhere in this region, potentially on the front line, there's a little footage here of an AFU soldier that brought down a, uh, well, two Russian Mavic 3 drones nearish to the front line. And this futuristic uh, device that the soldier is holding isn't a firearm, but rather it's an electronic warfare device designed to disrupt the electrical circuitry or the circuit board of the drone in order to bring it down. Also in this location, there has been a explosion reported at Berdyansk. So this is really just at the Black Sea or really the Sea of Azov, I believe this one here. Now it's a known far back location for Russian forces to store munitions in greater quantities. I believe there's, there's quite a command center base here as well. And again, it, it's not the first time it's been struck. It's certainly been struck a few times within this war. Oh, and obviously uh, the, the air base that you can see there as well. I think that's the last thing that was struck there, maybe about a month or two ago. Then we move across to the adjacent front line that is Kherson. So Ukrainian forces just conducted a pinpoint strike on a Russian base in Hola Pristan. So that's really just opposite the, uh, the recently liberated Kherson city. So we'll just find that one over here a little bit more south, in fact. But also uh, another pinpoint strike on Kakovka. So that one is a little bit more to the north. There it is with the, the most uh, northern winking pig designation there. And that one also a, a Russian base too. So this location was said to be quite the uh, accumulation point for Russian troops. Although the, the death toll was not yet confirmed, but we might get an indication of, of what it is on tomorrow's KIA data. So this data right here. Then there was a bit of uh, captured Russian hardware in the Kherson region as well. Now, if you've, if you've been watching this channel uh, for long enough, you'll know that uh, this is by no means a new vehicle. It's a real classic, in fact, about 50 years old a BTR Rio stat. So as the comment trolls usually like to say, Russia is saving their best stuff till last. I kid you not, that that's an actual excuse being used. Then right there in uh, adjacent uh, Sevastopol in the uh, Russian occupied Crimean Peninsula, there were some reports of shooting down of a drone, a Ukrainian drone there this morning. And this also comes around the time that the Kremlin are uh, admitting that Crimea is vulnerable to attack. Then we'll jump into some news for today, guys. So Time Magazine announced the spirit of Ukraine and President Zelensky as the person of the year for 2022. Now, as soon as I heard this news, I just had to go and pull up watching some Russian news media television just to hear their spin on this news. And that, my friends, was a solid 30 minutes of my life I'll never get back. They just tried to discredit the award, full stop. But I mean, of course they would do that. Why did I expect any different? It, it is Russian propaganda after all. And speaking of Russian propaganda, in some other news, uh, today Putin spoke at a Kremlin Human Rights Council. And yes, the irony about that is just insane, where he was really just attempting to put a positive spin on things 10 months into his three-day war. He said additional mobilization wasn't necessary, but he's just putting the Russian public off guard for now. And uh, of course they wouldn't mobilize as winter even uh, comes more into the weather situation on the ground for the next couple of months. But I am truly willing to place a money bet that Russia will commence further mobilization around the first week of February. And you know, the problem we have here is a political one for Putin. 
Putin's grip on power is now and forevermore tied to this war, and indeed its outcome. So if he withdraws, he will lose all gains in one big embarrassing loss, and he would lose support at all levels of government, not to mention the general population as well in Russia. But for him, keeping the war going is also not a popular move, as he'll continue to mobilize even though he's saying he's not. And that's going to cause a lot of Russian civilian losses as well. A lot more, I should say. An insurmountable amount, really. Then in some lighter side of news, so the Ukrainian Postal Service has released some new stamps with designs that are really quite fitting for the times that Ukraine is in right now. These ones include MLRI's Grad Rocket Launchers and, you guessed it, High Mars as well. There was also a High Mars clock on display too. Perhaps this one is either a collector's item to purchase or a new standard issue analog clock for each post office. I actually don't know a lot about the clock yet, but I'd, I'd like to know more. And then in just a bit of a funny to round it off with today, guys. So a photo has surfaced from about a week or so ago showing a, well, the, the Russian laid dragon's teeth in the Donbass East region, showing that they've already started to fall apart. Also in the, in the complete absence of any Ukrainian tanks or strikes. Now this is quite funny to me because I've been quite the vocal critic about these dragon's teeth defensive blocks. I've constantly been calling them cheap, low-grade concrete designs that haven't even been installed properly. They should be sunk into the ground and not just laid on top as they are. So it looks like my berating of these cheap little pyramids is starting to come full circle now. Well, full pyramid. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button. Definitely feel free to leave me a message in the comments. You'll probably notice I'm in there uh, quite a bit, uh, certainly when I get the chance most days of the week. And uh, yeah, thanks again for all of your support. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.